Hi, welcome to Motherhood Interrupted with my mom, Kimberly Lovey. My name is Charlotte. Hello and welcome back to Motherhood Interrupted. Today, I'm going to talk to you guys about the power of adding positive people. Now, this actually came from Ed Milet, who I love his podcast. He is a business coach and I know my audience is a little bit different than his. So I'm going to go ahead and re, kind of re, recap a thought that I got from him that changed my life. And I'm here to share it with you guys. Okay, so many of us kind of know about what it means to be removing negative people from your life. And I want to say that back when I was in my 20s, I started to really get good at this. And kind of at that time, I realized, okay, some of these people are trouble or not positive influences, or they're just toxic for me in one way or another. And oftentimes when people are toxic, they don't mean to be, they just can't get their own stuff together. You know what I mean? And so it's hard when you're younger to recognize, or really at any time to recognize when you're struggling with a friendship, any kind of relationship that a lot of times it's hard to realize that it truly is not about you. It's about someone else's inability or Um, lack of capacity to show up for you, to show up for you the way that you would like. And so kind of that realization was a huge deal for me in my 20s. And that's when I really started to just weed out people like crazy. And since that time, I've gotten incredibly good at continuously reevaluating the people that I let into my space. And also not just people, but content, content that I like let into my brain. So for example, I stopped watching the news because I realized that I'm way too much of an empath to kind of digest all the news, which I always call it the bad news. And I would get super upset about all the storylines going on in the news. And oftentimes there were things that I could have no control over. And so I realized the news is really toxic for me. So I stopped listening to it, stopped reading it. Now, if I want to look up something specific, I can um, through the power of the internet, thankfully. So I'm able to kind of handpick what I let into my brain. But I also do that with my friendships, my relationships. So when I'm meeting new people, I'm constantly evaluating and not even just new people. When I'm Yes, when I'm meeting new people, but also as I get to know people or even old friends, I'm always reevaluating is this a couple that's healthy for Brian and I to be around? Is this somebody that makes me feel uplifted? Or do they just kind of dump on me? And I think what's tricky about that is one, constantly reminding yourself to reevaluate and somebody that could have been not toxic for you a while back could for some reason now become toxic or triggering. Um, And I think that's just, it's selfish and it's important to be selfish in that way where you're really protecting your own emotional space and protecting the thoughts and feelings that go into your day-to-day life. And so that's probably one of the biggest tools that I use. And what I do is when I do find somebody that I realize is toxic, I just kind of do the slower back away, create more distance. And I don't announce it. I don't say much. I just see less of them, less text messages, less everything. And it's a very slow, natural devolvement of a friendship. And so I've gotten extraordinarily good at that. It's super important for you guys to also be looking around at your circle and maybe a friend from 20 years ago, from 10 years ago, from three years ago, all of a sudden isn't adding value to your life anymore for one reason or another. And look, obviously friendships are supposed to be two ways. So that's not to say that if someone's going through a tough time, you should be bailing on them. That's not at all it. It's just that you'll start to notice that you might have friends that were struggling with like a marriage, for example, 20 years ago, and they're constantly downbeating their husband. And now it's 20 years later, and they're still in that marriage and nothing's changed. And it's, to me, that's not 
positive, that's not uplifting, that's not someone that's truly taking action and trying therapy or trying to work through issues. And, you know, it's just somebody that's bringing up repeated problems and dumping them back on you and yet doing nothing about it to really help themselves is not somebody I allow in my space. And, you know, a big reason for that is because I pour into my friends and family so much that. I have to at some point cut them off because it's a big waste of my energy to be pouring into people, giving them so much love and support and taking, you know, sometimes hours and hours of time, you know, helping somebody through a situation when they really need a friend and then when they really need a friend and then they just come back and it's two years later and it's the exact same discussion. So that's when I will cut somebody off when it's like, you are just at this point draining my energy and I cannot help you because you're not even actually here to help yourself. So that is something I do all the time. And if you're not doing that, I I would encourage you to start really evaluating if there's anybody that's draining you of energy, that's when you need to do the slow back away and cut them out. So kind of the advanced version of this is once you feel like you've really mastered that skill of flagging and weeding out and creating distance between you and people that don't add to your life and really removing people that are draining your energy is seeking out and creating space for people that add to your life. And I was having a great conversation again with one of my good girlfriends and I thought I have to talk about this on the podcast and she's had a very tough upbringing and things have not been easy and she is incredibly strong and as we were talking she's like yeah I will instead of just staying with my same friends and doing the same old routines I'll just leave my schedule open for the unknown and I thought that was such an interesting way of saying this of like an example and she's like yeah because you never know where your week will take you and that space in my schedule allows me to say yes to things on the fly and so many times it ends up being like a totally different adventure than I would have ever had if I were just staying in my comfortable routine with the same people and I'm really trying, she's really trying to grow herself on so many levels, which is why I love and respect her so much. And yeah, so I was like, okay, we need to talk about this because it's something I, over the pandemic, started doing and really started to re-curate my circle of people that I hang out with. And the reason for it was all about adding, I felt like, okay, I've done step one, I've removed negative people, but now I'm kind of steady state and I want to level up. I want to be to the next, 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 next level. I want to be around people that are doing what the highest version of me wants to be doing. They're driving the cars maybe that I want to be driving one day. Um, They have the success, whether it's in business or it's in their marriage or with their children or their parents, whatever their, there's so many different facets that people that are really masterful, masterful at certain areas of their life, it could be that they're amazing at tennis or golf or whatever the sport is. Um, You know, anything that you feel like is aspirational to you, finding people that have already been there and leveling you up is super important. It is one of the most important parts of success that, again, I don't feel like is talked about enough. And I think I read a meme the other day that said like, oh, I think Kim Kardashian posted it actually, funny enough. And it said something like, I want to hang around with friends that only talk about the craziest of ideas or something like that. And I'm like, yes, yes. And that's exactly why Kim Kardashian is where she is today. Um, So yeah, I think that keeping in mind that step one, you need to take away people. And sometimes it's family members that are super toxic. They drain you of your energy and starting to really focus on finding people that in one way or another, they inspire you. They level you up. They're doing the next thing. Um, I think what's also tricky about this that I don't think people talk about enough, and I think it happens mostly with women, honestly, is A lot of times when there's a woman out there doing or having or experiencing something that you could only wish for at that moment, you actually kind of don't like them. You actually get threatened 
and it's hard and you'll find yourself not liking that person. And I'm going to challenge you right now. If there's someone that you can think of that that is that is that person for you right now and a name just popped in your head, I want you to double click into the thought and I want you to think about what is it about her that I hate and then think about what really is going on here? Like what does she have that I don't or what does she experience that I don't? Um, it could be they have more kids than you. It could be, you know, she has a deeper relationship with her husband. They travel more. She has a better career. She's more confident. Whatever the case may be, I want you to really study that person that triggers you. And I want you to focus on them. And I want you to be honest. And this is a conversation that you have only with yourself and nobody knows. And I want you to really think about it. And the reason why it's important is because I guarantee there's something about that person that you actually envy and that you actually adore that is triggering for you because in some way, shape, or form, that is a person that is a reminder of something you want and you don't yet have. And I want you to focus on acknowledging that first. And second, I want you to focus on flipping the script. So what can you do? to join in that success or make a step in that direction and use that person as inspiration because truly your feeling of dislike or distaste with that person is really coming from a different place and you're blocking it and you're shutting out your own and you're suppressing your own desires on something. And I guarantee if you let that narrative play out freely in your head, you'll start to reveal a lot more about something you truly want. And so I want you to focus on in the next couple of weeks before the end of the year, I want you to start figuring out different areas of your life you'd like to grow. And it could be something like physical fitness. It can be a language. It can be any random skill or um, experience. Like if somebody you know always goes to Cabo and you know they like have the most fabulous time and they have it on lock, like... Why don't you invite that person to Cabo with you if if you want and say, oh my gosh, I love how you do this. Can you please show me your ways? Like we need to do more of that as women and less of the tearing each other down thing. And I think a lot of it comes from like much deeper feelings and I guess perhaps insecurities. And I just want to challenge you. And the reason why I want to challenge you is because there's a wall to be broken down there. And when you come out on the other side and you start being proactive instead of being you know, festering and just jealous, frankly, I think you're going to uncover a lot more parts of yourself that you really like, and you're going to feel a lot more fulfilled and satisfied, which is what life's all about. Um, it's, it's not a dress rehearsal and it's time that you take it by the horns. So thank you for joining me on this very quick episode. I'm going to be doing quick hitter episodes like this where I give you a little bit of positivity or inspiration. So look for those. I'm giving you a little bit of insight, a little bit of inspiration, and hopefully you can keep it with you and carry it with you and be better for it. So thank you for listening. And please, again, share this podcast or this episode and DM me if this is helpful at all. If you like these short episodes, let me know. And I look forward to chatting with you guys again soon. All right, that is it for today. Now, as you know, some of our best conversations actually happen after the show. So I want you to find me on Instagram at Kimberly Lovey and let me know your thoughts about today's show. You can screenshot this episode and let us know what your biggest takeaway was and tag me at Kimberly Lovey and we can share it on our stories. I will see you again, same time, same place next week.